Well, hello, hello, and welcome to Training Tuesday, everyone. We are so glad that you could join us today for our intro to epoxy's uses. For those of you who may be first timers to Training Tuesday, I am Heidi Reese with Dayton Superior's Marketing Training Department, and I'm sitting right here with Chuck Hoke, who is our National Training Manager. So let's first begin like normal with some minor housekeeping for our webinar today. We've muted everyone on the call so that there aren't any, any disturbances or puppies in the background, kids yelling, you know, the whole drill. Um, but you're more than welcome to go through the chat functionality. Some of us have already been chatting and you can ask some questions throughout and we'll have a mini question answer session at the very end where I will read your questions and we'll get those answered for you. In addition, the presentation is also being recorded in case you want to re-listen to it later or forward to someone that might, um, you know, benefit from it or couldn't make it. And, uh, and yeah, there's that. So we're going to talk about intro to epoxy uses today, the definitions and characteristics of those epoxies, the standard specifications and the chemistries around them, and then an overview of testing and applications. Uh, just to state here, this presentation is intended for training purposes only, so anything that you see within that um, Chuck will be addressing is for technical specifications, anything like that, you can find on DaytonSuperior.com, and so I'll just refer you to that for technical and safety data sheets. So I want to tell you a little bit about Chuck in case you don't know him. Most people do, though. He's going to be presenting for us today, and many of him, many of you, excuse me, know him from his current role right now as training manager. And uh, he has been in the construction industry for 48 years. He's been a dealer, sales, product manager, and a whole lot more. Super wealth of knowledge, and uh, yeah, he's, he's really excited to have him here to talk to us about all of the great things that he will today about the epoxies. So Chuck. Thank you, Heidi. As Heidi alluded, we will be talking today about the objectives uh, for this class here. We're gonna talk about the uh, definition and characteristics, similar chemistries, standard specifications, applications, and obviously we're gonna to touch base on some of the products that Dayton Superior has to offer. What is an epoxy? Well, uh, it's a thermal setting resin that forms a cross-linked polymer structure with an irreversible chemical reaction. Basically, once the reaction starts with this product, there is no turning back. Uh, commonly used in adhesives and coatings, epoxies typically are reactive, uh, reactive systems so they typically have to have a base and a resin. Uh, typically the resin, excuse me, they have to have a resin and an activator. The resin component, typically the part A, uh, usually modified in with the viscosity as far as that's gonna give you your thickness and consistency of the product. Uh, we'll mix with a type B component, which is usually your curing agent or your hardener. And you can have different mix ratios. Typically, you can have an A to B uh, mix ratio, a one to one, two to one, three to one, four to one, and have obviously a 10 to one also in certain, certain situations, depending on the type of epoxy you're using. The benefits of using an epoxy, uh, excellent adhesion. It's moisture insensitive, so it's, it's very, uh, very good to use in uh, a, a water, I won't say a water situation, but a damp situation. Uh, negligible shrinkage, low VOC, chemical resistance, and high durability. Other characteristics with this product here uh, is a resinous chemistry. Uh, we've got Polyesters. Polyesters are inexpensive, fast curing, cold weather. Uh, some of their drawbacks is a little bit higher shrinkage and they are moisture sensitive. Uh, vinyl ester is inexpensive, fast curing, uh, very good for cold weather application. They do have, unfortunately, a high shrinkage rate and they are moisture sensitive as well. Uh, MMAs, methylbisacrylates, Typically, our fast curing, uh, cold weather use, 
short shelf life, which is one of the major drawbacks, along with being flammable. The HM, HMWMs, uh, high weight molecular, high molecular weight methyl acrylate. That's a mouthful. That's, yeah. <laughs> uh, durable, uh, basically a sealer or primer type application. Unfortunately, it does sometimes, if mixed improperly, it will result in a very violent uh, reaction. You also have urethanes and polyurethanes. They're, they're basically durable, chemical and UV resistant, uh, moisture sensitive, uh, uses isoannurates, and sometimes they're very uh, hazardous materials. Uh, polyurea, cold weather application, chemical resistant, UV sensitive. Uh, fortunately, these are very expensive and use isoannurates also. Uh, so some of the terms we're going to talk about, exotherm, heat generated by the chemical reaction, modulus, moisture, measure of rigidity and elasticity. A high modulus offers stress transfer, uh, typically structural bonding for a rigid uh, type connection. A low mod is basically a low transfer, so usually less rigid, a little more flexible. Uh, viscosity. Uh, the material's resistance to flow at a given temperature, usually measured and uh, reported in units called uh, centipoids. Uh, typically, water is equal to one centipoids. Gel time, that's a laboratory standard for comparative purposes for all the different products. Pot light, which is something we're typically more concerned with, is the time that after mixing it, the time that we have that will be uh, the work time that we have to work with the product uh, for proper use. It basically is just basically giving you a working time for that product. Creep. Uh, creep is in deformation. It's basically strain of the material cause the stretch of the material when it's uh, put in a load or a stress over time. Uh, unfortunately, you, you, we've heard a lot of this uh, creep factor involved with the Boston Tunnel collapse. So uh, that is what we are talking about, is where the product will actually uh, start to stretch a little bit from the initial uh, application. Epoxies and concrete share two features. They're both mass and, mass and temperature dependent. The greater the mass, the faster it will set up. It's generating heat as it's actually starting to heat up, so therefore the more material, the higher the heat. The warmer or colder the surrounding temperature is also going to determine whether it will set faster or slower depending on temperature. Obviously, faster temperature means faster set, colder temperature, slower set. Uh, specifications. Most of these epoxies typically fall into a category of AXO M235, uh, ASTM C881. Uh, standard specification for epoxy resin bonding compounds. Typically, three different, you have different types, grades, and classes associated with this. You have type 1, typically non load, -based, load bearing. Uh, type 2 is a non-load bearing, but fresh to harden concrete. Uh, type 3 is bonding uh, skid resistant materials. Type 4 are typically load bearing, hardened concrete to hardened concrete. And type 5 is going to be load bearing, fresh concrete to hardened concrete. Type 5 is a segmental bridge adhesives. Uh, typically, we don't uh, get involved in too much of that. Specifications, C881 classification, now let's talk about grades. Grade one, low viscosity. Grade two is a medium viscosity. Uh, typically similar to like pa pa uh, pancake batter. And grade three is a non-sagging, almost a toothpaste grade type material. Uh, temperature classifications, uh, a below 40, uh, B is 40 to 60, grade C is 60 and up. Gel time. 
as defined by C881, uh, integral between the mixing and the transformation to a, of a gelatinous mass. Often misunderstood and confused with cure time and application. Gel time is measured in 60 gram masses at 73 degrees plus or minus two degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, different than cure time, it's mass versus a thin film. So basically what we are looking at here is gel time versus a three hour thin film set. Test method for viscosity, uh, resistance to flow. Uh, we're following ASTM, again, 2393 for this. It's been withdrawn from that uh, just recently, so uh, they're, they're now coming up with a new ASTM 2556. So the measure for viscosity in poise, centipoise is uh, poise or mega centipoise. So basically one poise equals 100 centipoise. Uh, water has the consistency of one centipoise. So RV spindles, uh, numbers through zero through 700, as it actually flows through, you're gonna be looking at how, what the thickness of the consistency is and how it actually flows and how much it flows and what type, how wide the spindle is or how wide, wide the actual flow is. Compressive strength. Uh, ASTM D695, uh, compress, compressive, uh, compressive properties of rigid plastics. Uh, you're talking compressive strength, maximum compressive strength that the test will specimen will in a compression test. Uh, as you can see here, the compressive modulus here is low mod, is less than 80,000 PSI. A more rigid type material is 300,000 300, uh, PSI. Tensile strength. Uh, tensile strength properties of plastics. Uh, tensile strength is the amount of force that's required to break the cured sample in tension. Basically, they're going to put it in a, a test meter and actually do a pull test on it to basically get the component piece to stretch and elongate and then eventually come to a snapping uh, end where it will break. Uh, low mod, about 2,500 less than approximately 2,500 PSI, uh, approximately 30% elongation. A high modulus is typically about 8,000 PSI with 1% elongation. Shore hardness, uh, durometer of hardness of the, proper, of the property of the finished product. Uh, typically, uh, types A and or D are used for epoxies. Uh, type A has a blunt end and used for a softer, low modulus material. Type D is a sharper point and used for a more rigid, uh, harder, more dense material. We also have bond strength that we take care of. We look at an ASTMC882. Uh, a slant shear bond strength, so what they will do is actually attach two component pieces and force the two pieces, compress them until they actually slide apart, uh, break in the bond strength there, and then record the uh, pressure that it took to actually uh, complete that uh, debonding of the material. Um, go ahead. A heat deflection is basically, for defect, basically deflecting the heat temperature of the plastic under flexural load. Uh, so when the heat is actually applied to the component straight down, what happens, how does it actually deflect the component pieces up? A type three or four or five, typically it's gonna be 120 degrees Fahrenheit minimum. And thermal compatibility, uh, ASTMC 884, standard trust standard test method for thermal compatibility between concrete and epoxy resin overlay. So you're seeing these with the type, uh, type three epoxy overlay. Uh, you're looking at usually, you're only you gonna use this when you have a type three epoxy overlay. Uh, compressor strength, C579, compressor strength in chemical resistant mortars. 
grouts, monolithic surfaces, and polymers. Typically, we're actually going to use a, a very similar gauge that we use for grout in a two-inch cube, uh, cured for seven days, and then basically some specifications call for other time intervals with this system. Uh, but the C1109 uh, sometimes specified through ASTMC 109 is the test method. Adhesive anchors. Adhesive anchors compliance. Typically they need a C881, which means they are an epoxy. Uh, they do have different types and, diff and typical a grade uh, three with classes of A, B, and C. Uh, typically what you're looking at is state DOT approvals on this, or most, re most of them will require an IMPO, ICC, or an evaluation report from ICC. Uh, you can also have a uh, NFS, NFS or ANSI uh, or Canadian 6.1 uh, potable water components with this product. So, adhesive anchorage compliance, AS, 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 excuse me, ACI 318.11, uh, commentary code, installing for adhesive anchors horizontally and upward incline support. Suitable for tension load shall be performed by personnel certified by an application program. Uh, this is where ACI is following it, it's, uh, it's come into the uh, be a savior for the industry. Uh, they've actually uh, developed an adhesive anchor installer plan uh, program that you can go through and become a, uh, ACI certified for the adhesive anchor installer. Uh, different uh, projects will require that as a minimum compliance item for any of these installations. Uh, basic anchoring instructions. Uh, pretty simple. You drill your hole, you clean your holes with a nylon brush and a brushing motion up and down, circular up, and then you want to make sure you clean it up uh, again. But then you want to turn around and blow the hole out. And you want to blow the hole out from the bottom of the hole upward. You don't want to blow from the top of the hole down into the bottom because everything will get pushed down. You'll end up failing to get an anchoring location down at the bottom of the hole. This way it enables you to blow everything, all the dust and re re uh, other particles that are collected in the hole up and out of the hole. Uh, from that point, you're going to actually insert the nozzle into the hole Fill the hole from the bottom. You do not want to fill the hole from the top because you can trap air in it. So therefore, keeping the hole from the bottom will basically keep all air pushing up and out. Products, anchoring gels. Uh, typically, we have our Sure, uh, sure Anchor J50 or Propoxy 300. It does meet a type one, type two, type four, and type five. Uh, very high strength structural type adhesive. Uh, typically for these types of products, you will see uh, the types and grade and classes specified in the drawings as to what they are looking for for the anchoring system. Uh, the next one is the J51. Uh, typically meets class one, two, four, and five, class grade three, class B and C. Uh, very good high strength adhesive, fast setting. Propoxy 400 is a type 2 epoxy with exception. That type 2 epoxy is with exception. Uh, the class A and B grade 3, uh, cold weather down to temperatures of 15 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, typically, most epoxies are going to have a uh, grade ratio, ratio of it's going to need to be somewhere in and above freezing anyways. Uh, but typically that Propoxy 400 is one of them that has a 10 to one product ratio. Pro Anchor Elite, uh, type one, it's a grade C down to 38 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, current ICCES report uh, qualified for seismic design categories A through S. Uh, and it is also NSF, AMC, and Canadian 61 approved. 
uh, prolate or select. Uh, once again, type one, two, four, and five, grade three, class B and C, with exceptions. Current ICC report available, uh, and once again, has all of the approved uh, recognized from NSF, ANC, and Canadian 61. Uh, the weather max typically is a, uh, a low temperature type uh, epoxy injection material, uh, type one, two, four, and five, grade three, class A, B, and C with exception, uh, can be installed down to 14 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, and once again, we do have current ICC report on this, and it is qualified for seismic design categories A through F. Propoxy 200, Sherbon J58. Uh, you can see the data sheet for what it is approved on. It is a grade two class BC, uh, typically uh, roughly 40 degrees Fahrenheit minute manufactured spec. Uh, tested and compliant per CDPH V12 version 1.2. It is certified green product. Uh, so we also have our Propoxy 204. And also with Propoxy 204, the big advantage on that is the 15 minute child time. And we have a slow setting bonding agent, uh, typically open long open time, you got gel time roughly 105 minutes, tax free in about six hours. Propoxy 50, ASDM C881, uh, grade one, grade in type C, class C, moisture tolerant, injection and gravity feed, uh, great for repairing uh, concrete walls, uh, towns, any concrete uh, structures that is cracked, uh, basically installing ports and then injecting the epoxy from the bottom port, all working your way upward. The Propoxy 100 is moisture tolerant injection type. Uh, typically, it's a, it's a better structural type uh, epoxy for when you're having to do a structural uh, connection or repair to with a, an injection material. J52 Proflex. Uh, Surefill J52, 100% solids, moisture tolerant, uh, tack free in two to three hours, uh, meets uh, ACI 3025.12. For joint material, shore hardness is roughly 85, allows for moderate time movement within the floor slab. Profil. One component elastomeric urethane sealant. Uh, fills expansion joints up to one and a half inches by three quarter inch deep. Water resistant after two hours, and it is paintable. Your Profil AW is a two component polyurea self leveling, low viscosity, uh, so the material will flow. Heavy, tra heavy tra uh, traffic and freezer type application. Uh, can be installed in temperatures down from negative 40 to 120 degrees Fahrenheit. The Propoxy 2000 and J55 used for precision grouting of machinery base plates, uh, three component system, uh, up to eight inches in a single pour extended or unextended. Uh, you can basically, it's a vicious uh, adhesion to concrete and steel. I mean, it will grab a hold of the product and actually attach itself uh, pretty pretty tenaciously. Uh, 14,000 PSI, so it makes a great product for machinery base plates, uh, precision grouting underneath those plates when you're talking a lot of uh, equipment vibration, equipment, uh, heavy duty equipment that's on top of it. Uh, it's a great product for that uh, application. Repair mortars on the epoxy end, you get your Propoxy AWP, the rapid resin repair, uh, repair down to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. You can open it up to traffic within 20 minutes. Uh, Non-shrink, it is a chemical uh, resistant material. It is a heavy chemical reaction within the product to basically get it to set up 
and that type of uh, time frame with that type of temperature. The sure patch uh, resin meets the C881 type 3 grade 1 class ABC, or excuse me, class BC. Uh, open the traffic in three to five hours. Um, thermally compatible with concrete. So it typically will match up with the concrete as far as transfer. You don't have any transfer or heat sink of any concrete or, or heat uh, transfer from the epoxy to the concrete. Complies with FAA specifications P501. Uh, the vertical and overhead material, uh, the ProPatch VO. C881, type 1, 2, 4, 5, uh, hook grade 3, class B and C. It does meet the uh, NSF, ANSI, and Canadian 61 approved. It's a good product for everything going in a vertical application patch and an overhead patch. The Sure Seal. Sure Seal LV LM Pro Poxy 40. Uh, the healer sealer. Uh, this is a very low uh, viscosity material, uh, high penetrating epoxy, so it will actually uh, penetrate through and into any cracks, and it will heal any cracks or uh, heals any cracks, and it will seal off those cracks. We also have Propoxy 606, a uh, flexible epoxy uh, loop sealant. Uh, secures wiring, lighting fixtures in roadways, airport runways. You see these being used all the time for all your roadways, for your uh, stop signs, et cetera, within the uh, intersections. Uh, airports also use this product for any uh, uh, wiring that may run through their concrete, uh, uh, that where they've made saw cuts through, they will actually come through and put this material in to fill over that compared. It is compatible with asphalt, so you can do it in this asphalt roadway. Uh, and we also have a J62 epoxy primer, uh, typically designed for touch-up of epoxy coated rebar, uh, ready to use spray can. It is fast drying. Uh, we also have polymer floor, floor coating, so our spec coat material. Uh, the spec coat comes in a variety of colors. We got the, the 100 WB, mid to moderate chemical resistance. Uh, the spec coat 100 is the moderate to chemical resistance type material. Multiple colors available in both of these products. We also have the clear coat, which is the solids of 100% solids epoxy, moderate chemical resistance, typically in clear only. The CR, 100%. Spec code 100 uh, CR, uh, no black epoxy, moderate to severe chemical resistance. Uh, two to one chemical ratio, multiple colors available. Uh, great product you can actually put down, and you can also put the urethane on top of it to basically help uh, with paint, paint fleck or any design that you want to put into the floor system. Uh, typically, that is a two-to-one color mix and multiple colors available. All right, I guess that's me. So before we get going to talk about the resources that are available to you and the special deal we've got going, um, I'm going ahead and open it up for uh, any questions that you have. Go ahead and put those into the chat functionality, and we'll get to those. So what kind of resources are available for you? Um, contact information on www.daytonsuperior.com. So basically, if you go at the very top when you come to the home page and you say contact us or about us, you will come to a screen where you can find all of your Dayton Superior and or Simon's reps available to you per the area that you live in. In addition, we've got product pages for all of our products and uh, technical data sheets that go correspond with that. So like in this example, Propoxy 100, you can click into that product page after searching it or finding it in other methods through the website, and then you can see the technical data sheet as well as a safety data sheet for all of our chemicals. There's a guide to epoxy, so specifically for this, um, you know, that's a great resource available to you created by our other experts in the chemical land of Dayton Superior. And if you have a special or specification request, you can do that through, um, we also have them for accessories as well, but since we're talking chemicals, there is a link 
for accessories and chemical specification assistance. It doesn't have to be a Dane Superior product. It can also be our competitors, but we're here to help you in finding the right chemical specification. Obviously, we hope it's a Dayton Superior one, <laughs> but uh, that will go to our uh, technical sales representative and they will get in touch with you. So I'm really excited to tell you about some of the deals um, on all the things that Chuck talked about. And just for December, we've got special pricing on cartridge sized epoxies of the ProFlex joint filler and crack repair. So that's a 600 milliliter cartridge, as well as the Pro Anchor Select that he talked about, and that's the 20 ounce cartridge. And then lastly, the Pro Poxy 100 400 milliliter cartridge. And you can contact your sales representative to find out these great deals and they can work through that. They are only on the cartridge sizes this month and they are for the three epoxies you see present. So with that, thank you, Chuck, if I forgot to say thank you. <laughs> great job. And does anybody have any questions that they would like addressed? All right, well, we'll give it just a second more. I want to thank you for joining. Um, just remember, we do these every Tuesday at 1 o'clock. Next week, we're going to be doing a Maxiform STS. Again, this presentation, along with all the ones that we do for Train Tuesdays, are recorded, and they're put out there on the website. So you can re-look at them or think, you know, now that I've had this epoxy, there's an anchoring epoxy. I want to go see that again in more detail. And there actually is. It's not, it's not fake. So you can go and see that as well and listen to it again. Um, any other questions or any questions? Okay. Well, I appreciate all of you hanging out with us today. I know Chuck does too. And we hope to see you next Tuesday. So everyone have a happy Tuesday. Till next time.